Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We will begin with exercises for lesson six. Uh, please pass whatever you have written to a neighbor or your study partner if you have one. Uh, if you don't have a study partner, pass it to some random person so that they can uh, uh, check the work. For some of these, we will go over them in a little bit of, uh, of detail. And the reason is that we're going to be reviewing several things now. And so the review will be uh, useful for making sure that we do understand material that we think we understand. The first exercise is going to ask you to translate from English into Arabic in the affirmative and the negative. So say it once as a positive declarative sentence and the one is a negative declarative sentence. And uh, who would like to begin? Uh, why don't we start with the sisters uh, in the back row. Uh, would you like to begin, sister? All right, so we can start from the very back and then we'll move forward uh, and then across to the rows. So number one. Yes. Samirna. And I will just write the positive form. Samirna. And the negative will be ma samirna. Right, with a ma in front of it. Number two. Ka nata. Right. They, two women, were. Number three. Uh, you, two women, uh, or you, uh, feminine plural, went down. Yes. Nazal tunna. The feminine is ma nazal tunna. Number four. You masculine pearl created khalaq tum and ma khalaq tum. Number five, they feminine found. That's plural. Wajadna. And the negative? Ma wajadna. Number six, they bowed down. Sure. For, to bow down, it's not looking for sajada, which is to prostrate. Uh, okay, yeah, that is backwards. Yeah, so let's use raka'a for uh, to bow down. So how will we say they bowed down with raka'a? Raka. Raka'u. Ma raka'u. Yes. Nazara means to come down. So no, it doesn't mean to bow. But if you had nazalu, at least you had the right form, which, which is good. Uh, number seven, they heard two men. Samia and ma samia. Good. You left, masculine singular. Number seven? No, and it says M, it means masculine. So, number six. Number six. They bowed down. Uh, if it doesn't say feminine, assume masculine for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, in Arabic, the masculine form is in general the default form, especially with nouns. 
but also with verbs, uh, the feminine will be formed by adding something to the masculine form. And number two, when there is a group of uh, men and women, or masculine and feminine nouns, then you will treat it as masculine. Right? So if you want to say, the sun rose, right? You, you will say what? The sun rose? Well, Tala'at Ashams, correct? If the moon rose, you will say Tala al Qamar. If you want to say the sun and the moon rose, then you will say Tala al Qamaru Washams or Washams, for example, the, sun, the moon rose and then the sun. Or vice versa. Right? You will say Ja al Rajul al Mar'a. The man and the woman woman came. Because it's one masculine and one feminine noun, the verb will come in the masculine form. So when it's when it doesn't say that it's looking for a feminine form, assume that it's looking for a masculine form. If you want, you can t mention both as well, and that's fine. Uh, next one would be you left uh, masculine singular. Kharajta and ma kharajta. She said. Qalat. And ma qalat. And now coming to the brothers. Uh, I went. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The the better form, the better word for to go, is. Yes, we did. We did. Qalat. It's right there. I have written proof that we did do number nine. Qalat. Uh, and then number ten, I went, will be the habtu. Ma the habtu. Uh, number eleven, you entered two men. You entered. And it's dual, so. Dakhaltuma. Ma dakhaltuma. And you left feminine singular. You left. Kharaj T. Kharaj T. Kharajat is she left. Kharaj T is. You left. And the negative is? Ma kharajti. You did not go. This is one instance where Arabic is much simpler than English. Uh, to make a sentence negative in Arabic, you only need to add a ma in front. In English, you have to add did not and then the verb. It's 1.5. Now we're going to in the next section we're going to read the Arabic read it with the full Arab and then show us how it will be in uh, if the sentence is no longer a verbal sentence but is a nominal sentence meaning it's not a sentence that starts with a verb but it starts with a noun right and one way to do that normally is to add inna and if you have a word, a sentence that starts with inna, inna is a harf, meaning it's a, a particle. It is the noun after inna that is considered the ism or the subject of the sentence, and then the word after that or the phrase after that will be the khabar of the sentence. But there are several changes that will take place when you put a sentence with inna. One, you will have to see and make sure that the verb and the subject agree as they are supposed to agree. 
and number two, you will have to make sure that the i'rab of the ism of inna and the i'rab of the khabar of inna are both correct. So be aware of uh, the different things you have to be careful of. Start by reading the sentence in Arabic and translating it. And whose turn is it? So, number one. Kharaj al awladu. Translation? The boys went. Yes, or they left. They exited properly. Uh, children is fine, yes. The children exited. And now, if you add it, it with inna, how will it look? Inna awlad khara ju. Okay, very good. Because awlad is plural, and it refers to people, the verb will now have to be plural. Right? Because this wow tells us the verb is plural, and it's referring back to the subject, which is awlad. Inna awlad kharaju. Whenever there is an inna, you cannot have a verb coming after inna because inna needs a subject which is a noun, an ism and a khabar. Is it awladu? It used to be awladu because before awladu used to be the subject, the fa'il of the verb. Right? So let me put the original sentence. The original sentence is what? Kharajal. Sorry. Kharajal. Aula do. So that was our original sentence. Aula do because it is the fa'il, and because the fa'il is mentioned as a noun, the verb will always be in the singular, right? even though the subject is plural. When we say inna al-awlad kharaju, is awlad now the fa'il of kharaju? No, because the fa'il of kharaju is this wa. They left. So what is awlad? Awlad is the ism of inna. Inna al-awlad. It's mansoor. Just like we will say. Inna Allah Ghafurun Ghafurun Rahimun Inna Allah Ma'as Sabirin Inna Allah Shadeedul Intiqam Whatever sentence you're familiar with keep one of those in mind to remember that the ism of Inna subject will be mansub and the predicate will be marfu'ah. In a sentence like ghafurun rahimun, you can see that very clearly. So, in grammatical point of view, you're not saying that the children will become the object of No, they're, they're, in Arabic it will be called ism of inna and khabar of inna, not the object. It's mansub, it doesn't make it an object. It's now the ism of inna. Inna al-awlada kharaju. Now, here is a question. We said that the ism of inna will be mansub, correct? Inna Allah. And in al-awlada, you see that. Awlada. But in this sentence, in Allah ghafurun, we can see the khabar is marfu. Correct? In kharaju, this is the khabar of the sentence, correct? It's doing the same thing that ghafurun is doing. God is forgiving. The children left. Does that mean that kharaju should also be marfu yes. 
sense. Did everybody hear that? Haraju is mabni, meaning that it is a past tense verb, it doesn't change. All past tense verbs are maghrib, kharaju are mabni. Kharaju will always be kharaju. It does not change, just like the past itself, no matter how much we may wish, does not change. The sentence, kharaju, that whole sentence, is the khabar. And so what we say is that that sentence is in the place of being marfu'ah. It's called fi mahallir rafa because it's doing exactly what a khabar would do. If I had taken out kharaju and I had put a noun in that place, it would have been marfu'ah. Like I can say kharijun. Kharijun, they are leaving. Right? And do you see how kharijun is marfu'ah? Is it marfu'ah? Kharijun. Jun, right? Not kharijin, kharijun. It's marfu'ah. So this kharaju is in that same slot. It's in a slot where a marfu'ah noun will go. But kharaju is not a noun. And technically it's not even a verb. Right? But it's a whole sentence. Kharaja is a fi'l mab mabni. It's a fi'l madi, so it's mabni. And the wow is the subject. That whole thing is a sentence. That sentence is the khabar. So don't look for where you can put a dhamma. Because it's not... It's, it's, it's a whole sentence and it's not going to take a visible i'rab. Question? It's been answered? Right, we'll see more examples of that. So, next one, Vahaba, sorry, would you like to read the next one in Arabic? Um, we'll think about it. How many men? Vahaba Rajulani, two men went, the two men went, correct? And if you add Inna, how will it be? If somebody asks for a salawat, they should get a salawat. So let's give him a salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. But you were wrong. Yes. Ar-rajulani is marfu'ah. But inna requires its ism to be mansub. Yes. So it would be ar Rajulaini. The haba. You were correct though in changing the verb to the dual form. You were close enough to get the salawat. Ar Rajulaini is the subject of inna, ism inna. The haba is khabar inna. Number three. The right tears came down, and if you add inna, inna salih, inna salihina, nazalu. Good. The verb will now become plural. And notice that salihun becomes inna salihin. Number four. Sami'at al bintan. When you see the sentence, you have Sami'at with a sukun on the top. And you have the alif in al bintan will drop. And you have a sukun on the lam. So you have Sami'at al bintan. You can't have a ta with a sukun and a lam with a sukun right after one another. So how do we pronounce that? Sami'at al bintan. Til. Sami'at til bintan. And we add a kasra to the top. Sami'at 
becomes Sami'atil Bintan. But that Kasra is only added to make it easier to pronounce. The two girls heard, good. And how will it be with Inna? Inna al bin. Yes, this is dual, correct? So bintane becomes bintane. Sami ata. Sami ata. Okay, uh, thank you. Number five. Dakhla al fuqara. U a i. U. Okay, and uh, translation? The poor entered or the destitute entered. And with inna? Inna al fuqara. Inna al fuqara. Correct. إن الفقراء دخلوا. Good. Next. كانت المرأتان. إن المرأتين. And then. Kanat. Kanat would be singular. We add an alif to make it dual. Kanata. Inna al mar'atayne kanata. And that sentence will probably need something to be added to make it a complete sentence. The, the, the two women were. Right? We, we want to know they were what. Um, right now it just says they existed. Which is possible, but usually you will see kanat used with a khabar, something to tell you um, what it's referring to. Uh, next one. Qala shuyu hu. The. The shuyu said. The uh, chiefs said, for example, with Inna, Inna Shuyu Kha Ka Lu. Good. Next. Sajadat. Tisalihatu. If I, I didn't hear you fully, but that sajadat will become sajadat tisalihatu. The righteous women prostrated, or the pious women prostrated, and in salihat saja. We can't say sajadat because sajadat is singular and salihat is plural. Right? So we need a pronoun that refers back to it. Sajadina. A salihat will be mansu. But how does a noun like salihat show that it is mansu with a kasra? The feminine plural. Inna salihati sajadna. It's not majroor. It is mansub. It just shows its mansub with camouflage. The kasra. Inna salihati sajadna. Number nine. Wajadal al anbiya u translation the prophets found 
Yes, we don't know what they found. So the sentence is, in a sense, incomplete. Grammatically, it's not incomplete, but in terms of giving us a useful message, it's, it, we need something else. Uh, how will it be with inna? Inna ambiya a waja du. Ambiya is plural. Ambiya is plural. And because the verb is going to have a subject that is a pronoun, it will refer back to it. So, inna al-anbiya'a wajadu. And that plural pronoun refers back to the subject. Inna al-anbiya'a wajadu. Next one. Uh, sisters back in the, the very back. Good. Inna rijala ma sami'u. Ar rijala will be mansub and it's plural. So sami'u will be plural. Uh, number 11. Yes, but we won't say kana al mu'minuna, we'll say ka nal mu'minuna. Because the uh, alif of the alif lam will never be pronounced, the lam will be sakin. Kana al mu'minuna. Good. And uh, not they were believers, but the believers were. Because al mu'minun is the subject in this case. They were. And with inna? Inna al mu'minina kanu. Question. Why did you not make mu'minun mansub? Why did you make it majrur? It used to be mu'minun. Why did she say mu'minin? Yes, mu'minin is mansub, right? It has a ya, but that is the mansub and the majru form. Inna al mu'minina. Yeah, I have very simple tricks, and that was one of them. If you can figure those out, then you don't have anything to worry about in the rest of your Arabic studies. Next one. Dhahab al muluku, and then with inna. Inna al Mulu ka vahabu. Yes, muluk is plural, so it'll be in al muluka vahabu. The next one, read it and read it with the full i'rab and then we'll translate it piece by piece okay so mana'atum is a verb correct what is the fa'il of that verb tum and the object is ibad so you prevented the servants. So it will be mana'atum al And as-salihin is an adjective describing ibad. That's why it is mansub. Because ibad is mansub. Mana'atum al as-salihin Why is ibad mansu? Because it is the maf'ul, the object. Mana'tum, tum is the fa'il. You prevented. al ibad as-salihina. The ibad, the servants who are salihin, pious, you prevented them, min 
Beytillahi from the house of God. Strategies that you will use will be to find the verb, to find out if the verb requires just a fa'il. Some verbs will only require a fa'il, like the verb the verb kharaja, which we'll see in the next sentence. And some verbs require a fa'il and a maf'ul bih. A fa'il means subject and maf'ul bih means object, like the verb sami'a, which you will see in the sentence after that. So whoever is doing the next sentence, we want a fa'il from you. Whoever is doing number three, we will want a fa'il and we will want a maf'ul bih from you. Uh, so who's doing number two? Go ahead. Okay. Kharajat uh, al mar'a, and when we combine that, we will say kharajatil mar'a. So that's good. Will we say al mar'ati? What is mar'a here? Fa'il. So we will say al mar'a two because it is the fa'il it will be marfu'a. So kharajat al mar'atu ala rijal al madinati faqalu Now it could be qad kharajat min din Allah. They said she left the religion of God, but more likely it will be qad kharajti min din Allah. They said hey you've left the re the religion of God. It's more likely to be addressing her. If you said Qad kharajat, that's okay. But Qad kharajti is probably more likely. So it's whether they're addressing her or whether they're just talking about her. It's whether they're addressing her or whether they're talking about her. If you say Qad kharajat, when she left, they're talking about, about her. She left. But if you say Qad kharajti, they're talking to her. You left. And that is one of those cases where you will have to look at the context. In a sentence like this, if we don't have the context, either one could be right. Sometimes in Arabic, they will add a word to make it clear. So they will say, for example, Inna ki qad kharajti, or Inna ha qad kharajat. That will tell you whether it's she or whether it's you. Number three. Okay, good. Qad sami'a, right? Sami'a is a verb. Allah is fa'il. So it's Allah who. Qad sami'a Allah. Who? Yes. And then, what is Qawl? Qawl is? What, what is the function in the sentence? It's maf'ul bih. God heard, and he heard something. What did he hear? He heard Qawl. So it's qawla. Qad sami'allahu, because Allah is the fa'il. Qawla, because qawl is the maf'ul bih. It is what is being heard. Is that clear? Why did we not say qawlan? Why is it qawla? Because it's mudha. Right? So it's connected to the next word, qawlal kuffari. And then kuffar is mudaf ilay, so it will be majroo, qawl al kuffari. And then that is actually one sentence right there. Qad sami Allahu qawl al kuffari. Translation? God heard what the kuffar said, what the unbelievers said. And what is the speech of the, the kuffar? What is it that they said? Wahum qalu. 
And they said, after qala, you will always read it inna. Right? So if you ever see inna, sometimes you're unsure. Is it inna or is it anna? They mean basically the same thing. But after the word qala, it will always be inna. No, inna can come other places as well. But if you see the word inna or anna and you're not, you're not sure, if it's after qala, it will always be inna. So, wahum qalu inna Allah ha. Because it's the ism of inna. Faqee run. That's the khabar of inna. Wa nahnu aghniya u. That's the third sentence now. Or fourth if you look at it. Nahnu is the muqtada. Aghniya'u is khabar. We are wealthy. So there's several sentences in that one sentence. Qad sami'allahu qawla al-kuffari. That is one sentence. Wahum qalu. That's a sentence. Inna allaha faqeerun. That is a sentence. Wa nahnu aghniya'u. That is a sentence. And then, Inna allaha faqeerun wa nahnu aghniya'u. Those two sentences together, they are what the kuffar said. So in a sense, all of those two sentences are a maf'ul. They said, what did they say, those two sentences? So that all together is a sentence that they, is, is what they said. Next one. Antum. Aina sami'tum ayatillahi. What is the fa'il of sami'tum? Tum. And is there a maf'ul bi in the sentence? Well, that's what we want to find out. Why is it ayatillahi or is it ayatillahi or is it not? Is there a maf'ul bi in the sentence? In the previous sentence, we had the word sami'a. It had a fa'il and a maf'ul. Because when you hear something, there is somebody who is hearing and there is something that is being heard. So, Samir'tum, you heard, what did they hear? Ayati. So, Ayat is the maf'ul bih, it's the object. And it's mansub, but the plural is with alif ta, and so it has a kasra. Why is it Ayati and not Ayatin? Because it's mudaf. Allah is mudaf ilayh. That's why Allah has a kasra. Ayatillahi. The ayat of God. The signs of God. In this case, it would be the verses. Because it's to hear. Aina. It means where. And we will get to what it is. It's known as dharf or maf'ul fi. Fi here. So we'll get to it later. Uh, number five. You can skip, sure. Just do it So let's stop there. Hum mu'minuna billahi. That's one sentence. Right? What is the muqtada? Hum. And what is the khabar? Mu'minuna billahi. Hum mu'minuna billahi. That's why mu'minuna is marfu' Because it is a khabar. Walmalaikati. Why did she say malaikati? Somebody. Because billahi and malaika is also being attached or conjuncted to uh, Allah. So they believe billahi in Allah and bil malaikati and in the angels. The meaning is there. Wal yawm al akhiri. In the last day, wa kutubir rusuli, kutubir rusuli is mudaf mudafile, the books of the prophets. Thank you. Sure. Whenever you have a sentence like this with harful jar, you are allowed to repeat the harful jar, but you do not need to. 
So in this sentence you can say هم مؤمنون بالله والملائكة واليوم الآخر وكتب الرسل You can also say هم مؤمنون بالله وبالملائكة وباليوم الآخر وبكتب الرسل Normally it's not repeated unless there is a need for emphasis or unless there is a confusion that might be there. In the next sentence, the possibility for confusion does exist in some sense, and I'll talk about that. But thank you for that question. Why don't we look at the next sentence? Uh, next sentence. So we can stop there. Can I Ibli, well, what is the fun function of Iblis in the sentence? It's the subject of kana. It's the ism of kana. The ism of kana is marfu'. Remember, kana, its ism is marfu'. So kana, kana Allahu. Ghafuran rahima. Kana Allahu. Kana Iblisu. Why is it not Iblisun? With Tanween. There's no Alif Lam. It's not Al Iblis. It's Iblis. Yes, it's one of those nouns that is unable to take Tanween or Kasra. What did we call them? Mamnu' min as sarf or Ghair Munsarif or Diptote. The subject of Kana, which is known as Ism Kana, is Marfu'a. The object will be Mansur. No, the object of Kana will be Mansur. Uh, uh, which is known as the Khabar of Kana. It's the predicate of Kana. So it's not really an object, it's a predicate. So Kana Iblisu, and that's why it's Adu One. Because this is the Khabar of Kana. Iblis was the enemy of God. Now notice it says Adu One Lillahi. What is the difference between saying adu wun lillahi or saying adu wullahi or adu wullahi, right? This is a marfu case or adu wan lillahi or Adu Wallah. Is there a difference between Adu Wun and uh, I think you might be on the right track. Ad yes, God's enemy or the en you said the enemy of God. Adu Wallahi, the enemy of God. Adu Wallahi, the same enemy of God, because God is definite and Adu is Ivapa mudaf, it will also be definite. The enemy of God. If there's a specific enemy that we're talking about and he is the one. Adu Allah, the enemy of God. But if I say Adu Wun Lilla or Adu Wan Lilla, an, an enemy to God, an enemy of God, or if you were saying opposing God. Right? It's not a specific enemy that we're talking about. An enemy of God. Adu Wan Lilla. <laughs> It makes it not more important, but it makes Shaitan definite that he is the enemy of God. Whereas I do one little lahi as if we want to say that God has enemies and Shaitan is one of them. It can be used to reduce the importance of Shaitan. Uh, Yes, it can be used uh, for that purpose to say that somebody is is not the soul or the or uh, as important as if we were to use a definite noun. But it's possible also to say adu Allah, and that is used. So it's not wrong to say adu Allah. It depends on what meaning you're trying to convey. Uh, but there is no ivafa if we say adu one lillah. Lillah means of God or for God or to God, correct? And then it says. 
ولل ملائكة ولل رسل ولل جبريلا هي ولل جبريلا why ولل جبريلا and not جبريلين because جبريل is غير منصرف it's a foreign name right جبرائيل and جبريل are both usable in Arabic they're different forms of the same name Now, in this sentence, let me write the sentence. Kana Iblisu Aduwan Lillahi Wal Malaika or Walil Malaika. Both of these are correct. I can say aduwan lillahi wal malaikati. Right? Lillahi wal malaikati. I don't need to repeat the li. I can also say lillahi walil malaikati. Why do you think they chose this form? Lillahi walil malaikati. Because if I just say كان إبليس عدوا لله والملائكة. It might be ملائكتي, but it might be ملائكتو. And if it's ملائكتو, then it would be كان إبليس عدوا لله وكانت الملائكة. ملائكتو. If it was ملائكتو, it would go back to إبليس. كان إبليس والملائكة. It would be yes. Attached to the ism of God. The angels are also the enemies of God. In Surah Bara'at, in the Quran, in Allah, Bari'un. من المشركين ورا سو If you say ورا سو له and you know what you're saying then you have officially left Islam because that means verily God is has nothing to do with the angels and with the mushrikeen, with the infidels, the polytheists, and with his prophet. God is free of association from the polytheists and from his prophet, which of course is wrong. So it's not bari um min al mushrikeen wa rasulihi. You want to say Rasulahu because in Allah. Correct? So you want to say Rasulahu because it's in Allah bari ummin al mushriki wa inna Rasulah. Is it Rasulahu in the Quran though? If, if you have a Quran, go and check. Is it Rasulahu? Surah Bara'at, Surah number 9. This is one of those verses that uh, Mufassirin like to spend a little bit of time on. Because uh, right in the beginning of Surah Bara'at, Surah number 9, Tawbah. Bara'a means having nothing to do with anybody, and Tawbah means uh, repentance. So for some Muslims it was a little bit too harsh to think of this as Surah Bara'at, and so they gave it, they know it as Surah Tawbah. Either name is acceptable, but uh, the name that is in the, the beginning of the Surah is Surah Bara'at. You find Rasulihi? Okay, you need to replace that Quran. It says Rasulihi? Yes. 
not simple. It's then uh, perhaps my memory is wrong. Okay, then uh, this phrase actually may not be in the Quran. Uh, in that case, okay. Bara'atun. Uh, Did you find it? Okay. I was going to say that I didn't think my memory was that wrong. Anna Allah bari'un min al-mushrikeena wa rasooluhu. Right? All of us wanted to say rasooluhu because it's Anna Allah. One of, one of the things that exists in the Quran is that sometimes the apparent sense of the verse is not what the, the uh, Quran goes by. So basically, Arab grammarians, what they say in this sentence, and I'm only telling you this because it's a verse of Quran and it's one of the confusing verses of the Quran, otherwise it's not important for you to go through the riddle, but because it's a verse of Quran, uh, it is useful. So let me just erase this extra. And we'll come back to this. So, Annallaha bari min al mushrikeen. What was this sentence originally? Well, what Arabs, grammarians say is that this sentence used to be a lot simpler. There used to be no Anna. It used to be just Allah bari un. Right? That's a simple sentence. Allahu bari un. Min al No, 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 not how it was revealed. This is basically whenever you have inna, what they say is that inna is added to a pre existing sentence. So you have a sentence like Zaydun ka imun. Zayd is standing. And then you will add inna, and inna will make it inna Zaydan ka imun. But underneath every inna Zaydan ka imun, is Zaydun Qa'imun. If you drink coffee and you have gum after it, underneath that fragrance of gum, there is still the coffee breath. So underneath, in Allaha Bari'un, there is Allahu Bari'un. Right? Allahu Bari'un. And what they say is that in this sentence, an Allaha Bari'un min al mushrikeena wa Rasulahu, it's okay if you say Rasulahu. But in the Quran, it's assumed that the sentence has kind of gone back to its original sentence. Warasuluhu, because it was originally Allahu bari ummin al mushrikina. Min al mushrikeen, don't be afraid to say that. Inna Sulaymana bari'un min al mushrikeen wa rasuluhu, right? So you wouldn't say wa jawadu, you would say wa jawadu. You would say wa jawadu. Or wa jawada. So you can't say either. You can say either. There is a reason why they say in the Quran this has been preferred, wa rasuluhu, and why rasuluhu has not been used. Uh, in everyday Arabic, you would say, Annallaha wa rasulahu bari'ani min al mushrikeen. Anna, because it's, uh, it's continuing uh, from a previous, uh, from the beginning of the verse. But inna or anna, that's not uh, important. They mean the same thing. The, the grammar will also be the same. But, Annallaha. Bari'un, that's the same sentence that you're used to seeing, right? It's just like saying, Inna Allaha ghafurun, correct? And Rasuluhu 
it comes back and refers to Allah, which is also in a sense Allahu. Because underneath that Allah, there was a simple sentence Allahu bari'un. And that is why it is sometimes important to know in Arabic, even if you don't have to show the Arab, what the background of the Arab is. Let me just give another example. Uh, I apologize uh, for uh, going outside of our... Allah? No, Rasul. Rasul, no, it's Marfu. Okay, Allah is Mansur. And Allah is Mansur. So if I say, Inna hadha, um, Yadhabu, This one will go, and I want to say, and his brother. I will say, وَأَخَاهُ Because I'm saying, إِنَّ هَذَا وَأَخَاهُ هَذَا, it doesn't show that it's Mansu, but you know it's Mansu. Right? هَذَا never changes. هَذَا is always هَذَا. If it's marfu, it's هَذَا. If it's mansub, it's hada. If it's majroor, like lehada or behada, it's still hada. But it can be marfu or mansub or majroor, it won't show it. And if you have something that refers back to it with the wal, that noun might show it. So, inna hada wa akhahu. I can say, inna hada wa أَخَاهُ يَذْهَ بَانِ Why is it أَخَاهُ? Because هذا is منصوب يَذْهَ بَانِ Because it's two There will be a difference in أَخَاهُ or أَخَاهُ أَخَاهُ It will be pronounced أَخَاهُ Just with a ضَمَّة not a long month. No, who will all, the who will always be who. Akhuhu, akhahu, akhihe. The the pronoun will not change. Ha is a feminine pronoun. Akhuhu is used when it's marfu. Like, Ja'a Akhuhu, his brother came. What I was saying is that Akhuhu or Akhahu, whatever the form is, who will stay who? The pronoun does not change. Rasuluhu is the, the, the way it is in the Quran. Someday, inshallah, we can talk about it in more detail as to uh, why did they go back to the uh, original form of the sentence. Uh, to, to be short and brief, the answer is that because the sentence is complete, in Allah bari ummin al mushrikina, it's a complete sentence, and so once the sentence is complete, uh, then it's considered easier to or more eloquent to go back to the original form of the sentence rather than to uh, pretend that in that sentence is still continuing. But the important lesson, if you don't want to remember all of those details, is in the Quran. Uh, there will sometimes be an i'rab which is based on another form of the sentence and you have to know what the background of the sentence is in order to understand how to read it properly and don't just read it based on whatever is closest min al mushrikina and then think that it will be by rasulihi that is definitely wrong okay let's uh, go through these uh, remaining sentences quickly Number seven. Let me do the remaining three sentences so we can then move on to the next part of the translation, the exercises. Nazala amrullahi ala kulubi bani adama. The command of God or the affair of God came down on the hearts 
of the children of Adam. Kulube Bani Adama. Why Adama? No, Nazara just takes the fa'il. Amru is the fa'il. Ala, yes. So Ala is a harf jar. That's why Qulub is majroor. Qulubi. Bani is majroor because it is mudaf ilay. The hearts of the children. And Adam is majroor because it is also mudaf ilay. The hearts of the children of Adam. But Adam, because it is non-Arabic, it does not take kasra or tanween, so we don't say ada min, we say ada ma. If it had been Muhammad, we would have said Muhammadin. Ala qulube bani Muhammadin. Innam ra'ata, and it's mudaf, so no tanween. Nuhin. And then this is also going back to the same thing. Wa ra'ata lutin. Kanata, feminine dual form. Kanata, li abdaini min ibadillahi salihaini. Salihaini is an adjective of abdaini. Li abdaini salihaini. And min ibadillah is jar and majroor of the servants of God. <laughs> or among the servants of God. Dakhala nabiyu fa'il. The Prophet of God. The Prophet came. Ala al fuqara'i al mu'minin. Upon the, the Prophet of God entered into the presence of the believing poor. Number eight, the translation. In namra ata nuhin wa namra ata lutin, indeed the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut, kanata, they were le abdaine, for or of, meaning they were the wives of uh, two servants, salihaine, who were pious, min ibadillah, among the servants of God. They were, yeah, they belonged to, in the sense of being the spouses of. Okay, translate into Arabic, and because I want to do these uh, quickly, so let's do them all together. Uh, I will read it in English, and help me with the Arabic. We have not bowed down before a human being. Start with the verb. Ma raka'na, right? Before a human being. Uh, Le insan. Le insanin. Ma raka'na le insanin. The women heard the Prophet's words and then left the city. Now, start with the verb. Sami'at. Yes. And then the subject. An Nisa'u. Yes, you can say the Prophet's words, you can say Kalam an Nabi. Kalam an Nabi. Nabi ye. Yes. You can say Aqwal an Nabi. Kalimat in Nabi, any of those is fine. Kalimat, the words, or kalam, or qawl, or aqwal, uh, those are fine uh, for the words. And then left the city. Bakharajna minal Madina T. Can't you just say Kharajna uh, No, Kharaja will be used with me. Kharajna min al And that's something you just have to know how it's used. So when you say Dakhala, 
you can say دَخَلْتُلْ Madinata. I entered the city but you don't say خَرَجْتُ Madinata. I left the city you will say I left from the city you can say دَخَلَ Allah if you enter into the presence of somebody but if you want to enter into a masjid you don't say دَخَلْتُ fil masjid you can say دَخَلْتُ masjid. Masjid will be the object yes sure Sami'at, it's singular. Sami'at. It's singular. And because the subject is a noun that is coming after the verb, the verb will always be singular. Right? So if the verb has a pronoun that it's referring back to a subject that's been mentioned before, then it will match singular, dual, or plural. But if the noun is a subject and it's coming right after the verb, then it will always be singular. The verb will never become plural. The pious poor man went to the king's house. So start with the verb, the haba, the pious poor. Al-Fuqara, Al-Salihun, to the king's house. Ila, Baytil, Maliki. They went to the house, so it'll be Ila. Fi means in. Is the rich man's house better than the poor man's house? A or Hal. Right? The rich man's house. House of the rich. So Baytul Ghani. Khairun. Min. Bait al Faqiri. Two things to note. Notice that this a uh, or hal, and hal is, is the better choice here. It does not change the grammar of the sentence. So, Bait al Ghani khayrun min Bait al Faqiri. We can add a hal, and the grammar does not change. Number two, khayrun can mean both goodness and better. Sharrun can mean both evil and worse. Bal huwa sharrun lahum. It is evil for them or it is worse for them. Notice also that in English you will usually need to mention the noun after an adjective, especially if the adjective is singular. So we don't say the rich, unless you are referring to a group of people. So I can say the poor, the rich, the wealthy, the educated, if I'm referring to a plural group. But in English, if I'm referring to one person, I don't say the educated, or the rich, or the poor. I say the educated man, the rich woman, the poor child. But in Arabic, you don't need to mention the noun, the adjective functions as a noun, because in Arabic an adjective is a noun. So I can say al-ghani, al-faqir, al-alim, al-abid. I don't need to say al-rajul al-alim, al-rajul al-ghani, al-mar'atu al-faqira. I don't need to say that. And that applies to the singular and to the plural in Arabic. The adjective is sufficient. The next one says, Gabriel came down to the earth at God's command for clay. So, verb first. Nazala. Yes. Jibril is masculine. Nazala, nazala Jibril. Ila al ardi. Yeah. 
بے امر اللہ لپتین فور على الارض you can say على الارض نزل الى is probably more common question can theme be indefinite for some clay in Arabic uh, the use of definite and indefinite does not always parallel what you would expect in English And in this case, you will probably be better off saying Litin uh, for clay. Uh, because when you use the indefinite, it sometimes implies one specific uh, uh, unit, right? So if I say Ja Rajulun, It's indefinite, but it's one. And many times in Arabic we will say, you know, Ja ar rajul, meaning not the man came, but some man came. You'd expect to say Ja ar rajulun, but they will often use the definite because, in a sense, the definite uh, does not emphasize that it was one person. who I don't know. It emphasizes that there is anybody. So don't always assume that where you use the indefinite in English is where you will use the indefinite in Arabic. There are times when it will be different. Uh, if you say litinin, it's not wrong. But litine is probably more natural. Nazala jibrilo ila al-ardi or ala al-ardi bi amrillahi Litinin or Litin. And that sentence, we're translating the sentence that was given to us. That sentence is a little bit of an odd sentence, uh, perhaps in English and perhaps in Arabic as well. When they heard the signs of God, they went out and fell down before the Apostle. So, Samir uh, Ubuds, we need something before that. If, if or Lama or Indama, there's different words in Arabic for when. So, whatever you wrote is fine. If is the one the book gave us, so we'll use that, even though that's less common. But if Sami'u Aya It's the direct object, Maf'ul Bih Aya Tillahi It's Mansu, but it takes a Kasra. They went out Went out Kharaju And fell down. You can say Sajadu. <coughs> Before the Apostle, uh, meaning in front of the Apostle. So you can say Amam al Rasul. Amam Qabl is for time So you won't say Qabl uh, al-Rasul You can say Amam al-Rasul You can say Lir Rasul Right They prostrated for the Prophet Right That's what's used in the Quran Qala rabbuka lil malaikatis judu li adama Prostrate for or before Adam Amam al-Rasul Lir Rasul, and also in the Quran you will sometimes see Baina Yaday. 
right? Baina yadai, yadai is yadaine, the two hands. The noon drops because of ivafa. Baina yadayir rasul, between the two hands. Between the two hands is in front of. Right? Unless you put your hands behind you, which is uncommon. Between your two hands is right in front. So you can say Baina Yadayir Rasul. Yadai is short for Yadaine, the noon drops because of Ivafa. Hands of the Prophet. Right. Any of those is acceptable. God said, I created Adam from clay. Min You can say min as well. But min The pious woman prevented the children from disbelieving. Good. You start with the verb. Mana'at. Uh, Al Mara the pious woman. So Al Mara tu Al Saleha tu Al Aulada or Al Atfala from disbelieving. <laughs> min min al kufri min al kufri from the disbelief from the disbelief min al kufri kufr no it's not ghair munsarif min al kufri Question? Mana'at is the word. Mana'at. Question? Ten. Take, go back to lesson number six, and if you don't have it handy, that's fine. I'll just write it on the on the board. Inna hadaika kanat qaribatan min huna. This is a very good sentence because in this sentence we have both inna and we have kana. Inna wants mansub and then marfu. Kana wants marfu and then mansub. So first let's look at the inna part. Inna al hadaiqa. That's the ism of inna. Is that good? And then what's the khabar? This whole thing. Kanat qaribata min huna. That whole thing is the khabar, and that whole thing is marfu, but because it's a sentence, we can't show the marfu. You, you can't show a dhamma on a sentence. Then, now we break it down. Kanat, that wants a subject. What is a subject? It's a little hidden here that goes back to hada'iq. Inna al hada'iq kanat. What kanat? That, that hada'iq. They were, those uh, uh, gardens. And then qariba is the khabar. Kanat qaribatan min huna. They were near from here or close to here. So notice that with inna, 
the ism of inna hada'iqa, we can see the mansub. But the khabar of inna, we don't see it. With kana, the ism of kana here is hidden. And we don't see it being marfu. But qaribatan, the khabar of kana, we can see it's mansub. So inna al hada'iqa kanat qaribatan min huna. Now, we say that the plural is treated like a feminine singular, and that's what you will see here. Hada'iq is a plural noun, plural of hadiqa, garden. But we don't say inna al hada'iqa kunna, which is how the plural would look. We haven't come to it yet. We didn't say qaribatun or qaribatin. We said kanat qaribatan, feminine verb, feminine pronoun. Feminine adjective, referring to a plural noun. Yes, if it's a non-human, that's usually how it will be. No, even if there's no inna, you will still treat a, a plural noun that does not refer to people as a feminine singular. And it can be a masculine plural, it can be a feminine plural, it will be treated the same way. Yes, so in al kutuba kanat qaribatan min huna. Okay, let's take a look at lesson seven. We took a look at the pronouns last week. We introduced the pronouns. <coughs> the uses of the attached pronouns, they can be added on to a noun. Right, which will be mudaf mudafile. That's what we call in English the possessive. Right. So my book, his book, their book. In Arabic, that is mudaf and mudaf ile. Kitabuhu is no different from saying kitabu zaydin. Right. Kitabu zaydin. Zayd is mudaf ile. Kitab is mudaf. Right? If I replace Zayd with Kitabuhu, Kitabuhu, it's still Kitab is Mudaf, the Hu is Mudaf ilay. A pronoun can also replace the Ism of Inna. Instead of being a noun, it can be a pronoun. So instead of saying Inna Zaydan, you don't need to write these examples because there's examples that will come in the lesson. But inna zaydan alimun, I can say inna hu alimun. They can be the direct object of a verb. Instead of saying qara'atu al kitaba, I can say qara'atu hu. And they can come after a preposition or a harf jar. Instead of saying min al babi from the door, I can say min hu. So it, they can be used in those ways. And we can look at the examples of this usage. In a possessive phrase, we can say Beituhu, Beituhuma, Beituhum, right? Whether it's referring to the house of one person or two people or several people, Beituha, Beituhuma, Beituhunna, Beituka, Beitukuma, Beitukum, Beituki, Beitukuma, Beitukunna, Beiti, and Beituna. And the only thing that you need to remember here is that 
the i'rab will show in all of those cases. But when it comes to the first person singular bayti, it will always be bayti. Bayt might be marfu' or mansub or majroor, but it will always be bayti. It's not like that with baytuka. I can say baytuka, baytaka, or baytika. Baytuka if it's marfu'. Right? Baytuka jamilun. Your house is beautiful. Ra'ayto baytaka. I saw your house. It's mansub. Because it's the right object. Mararatu be be tika. I passed by your house. Be be tika. So be tuka, be taka, be tika. They can all be used. But with be ti, it will always be be ti. If I say be ti jami, what is the arab of be? Be ti jamilun. Beiti Jamilun. Right? It's marfur. You don't see it though. Because it's the subject, Muqtada. If I say Ra'ayta Beiti, you saw my house. What is Beit? Beit is Mansub, because it's the Maf'ul Beit, the object. You saw it. Beiti though will not be able to show the fatah. Had it been baytahu, you could see the fatah. Baytahu, baytaka, baytakum. But with the ya, you can't so show it. If it's bibaytihi, you can see it with bay, bibay, tihi. Bibaytihi, bibaytika, you, you can show the jar on the top. But if it's bibayti, we'll I'll talk about that in a second. Bibayti, that will always be bibayti. The kasra will always be there before the ya. So bayti, any noun that has a ya, it will always be with a, uh, uh, a, a kasra before it. That's number one. Number two is note that the ha pronoun because ha is a very light letter the vowel will follow what comes before it so if i say bay to who i will say bay to who if i say bay ta i will say bay ta who it, it won't change because the, the masculine singular pronoun will be who but if there's kasra it will be he bay to he bay to him so if it comes after a kasra or a ya, alay hima. I won't say alay huma. The ha will, will change it. The kum will not change. Kum will always be kum. You'll never say kim. Kunna will always be kunna. But hunna can change to hinna. Lahunna bihinna. So the ha will either be dhamma or kasra, depending on what comes before it. We have some examples. Hadith of the Prophet, Ana Madina to the Ilmi, wa Aliyun ba Buha. Aliyun ba Buha. Hum ahlu bay ti. Somebody will get a salawat if they can tell me what is the i'rab of bait in the sentence. What is the i'rab of bait in the sentence? Hum ahlu bayti. Bait. Yes. Hum ahlu bayti. So, bait is mudaf ilay to ahl and then mudaf to ya. The people of the house of me. Yeah, the house of me. Right, so we have two 
idafas here. We have ahl idafa to bait, people of the house, and the house belongs to me, so it is also mudaf. So bait is mudaf ilay, it has a jar. But that kasra is not showing the jar, it's always going to be there, that kasra. So here it's mudaf ilay. Hum ahlu bayti. And it's mudaf to the yeah. So we can give a salawat to those of you who got that right. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. What is the confusion? My confusion is are you saying that within this table when you put the hold on that these are changing based on the case? The pronoun will not change based on the case. What will happen is the noun that comes before the pronoun will change. So, beituhu, instead of saying beituhu, we can say beitahu. We can say beitihi. That noun that comes before the pronoun can change depending on what the case is. The pronoun itself will not change based on case. But in some cases, the pronoun's vowel will follow what comes before it. So, beituhuma, beitahuma. But when it comes to a kasra, it will become beitihima. That is just to make it easier to pronounce. Because beiti huma is kind of hard to say. Beiti hima. So let's look at the remaining examples. Awalu na Muhammad, awsatu na Muhammad, akhiru na Muhammad. There's three sentences. Awalu na Muhammad. The first of us is Muhammad. Awsatu na Muhammad. Awsat is middle. Akhiruna, last one. Our last one is Muhammad. If qala lahu rabbuhu. Why is it rabbuhu? It's fa'il. Right? God said, his Lord said. Rabbu is the fa'il. His Lord said. Lahu is, say, is jar and majroor, a prepositional phrase. Who is saying it to? So you can you can delete that. You can say, if ghala rabbuhu, when his Lord said, to who did he say? Lahu. Mm -hmm. To him. His Lord said to him. So if it makes it easier, you can put that lahu afterwards. You can say, if ghala rabbuhu lahu. You know, don't, don't change it in the Quran. But <laughs> mentally, if it makes it easier, uh, then you can put the lahu afterwards. No, no scissors and uh, paste for the Quran. وَمَنْ يُسْلِمْ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ يُسْلِمْ who submits wajhahu, his face. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ Kursi Yuhu. Kursi is his throne. Kursi Yuhu is his throne. Kursi is throne. Wala Yauduhu. This is another use of the verb uh, which we'll talk about next week. Hif Dhuhuma. Yaudu is to make somebody tired. Hif Dhuhuma. Protecting them. What is them? As Samawat. Wal -ard. So protecting the two, the heavens and the earth, does not tire him. Huma here is feminine because samawat and ard are both feminine. Of course, the pronoun is the same. Huma is the same, but it, it, we would be using a feminine pronoun to refer to two things. Falahum, lahum, is la plus hum. Notice that when it comes on a noun, we say li. So I say li zaydin, li muhammadin, li jawad, li masjidin, lil marati, lillahi. But when it comes on a pronoun, li becomes la, laka, lahu, lana, lakuma. Except when it comes before ya. Of course, li 
we still say with kasra, li, because anything before the ya will have a kasra. So, lahum ajruhum inda rabbihim. For them is their reward with their Lord. Wa idh qala rabbuka. Rabbuka, your Lord, said, lil malaikati for the angels, to the angels. Am turiduna an tas'alu rasulakum. Rasulakum, your messenger. It's the maf'ul bih, the direct object. Tas'alu, you ask, rasulakum, your messenger. Ya bani isra'il adhkuru. We'll just finish these two sentences. Ni'matiya. Ni'mati is the word ni'ma plus ya. Ni'mati. Ya bani Israel adhkuru ni'mati. Wa qalu qulubuna. Qulub plus na. Qulubuna ghulf. Ghulf is from the word ghiraf. Aghlaf to be covered. Ni'ma is mansub in this sentence. Udkuru ni'matan. The favor. But here it's ni'ma ta of me. So it's mansub, but it doesn't show it because of the ya. Ni'mati. Question? Kulubuna, our hearts. Wolf means to be to be covered. Yeah. Okay, the, the notes on the next page they actually continue the uh, the same uh, things that we've talked about, but we'll stop here for now, and inshallah next week we will continue with lesson seven. Yeah. No, no, next week you do not need to do any exercises because we will finish this lesson. We'll begin, inshallah, the next lesson. And then we will uh, move on from there. Please recite salawat.